I like to frequently show off tools and scripts and little add-ons for Windows or whichever operating system I'm using that I find them for uh, when I come across them, as there's a lot of little things that you're not going to hear recommended about a lot of the time that have been pretty revolutionary to my use of a computer, I guess I could say. And such a tool is called PyWin Context from Dylan, or Vodbox, who is the Pizza King role in our Discord server over at eposfox.com slash Discord. I, I would like to say I was sort of like a motivator or inspiration for this to be developed as I got really annoyed because a lot of the files that I would record with, say, NVIDIA Shadowplay or Share or whatever they call it these days would be a, I can't even find a file now, well, yeah, would be a variable frame rate. These are both showing 60, but sometimes they'll be like 47.98 or 58.94, some weird variable frame rate that would cause a lot of trouble with both audio sync and applying After Effects effects in editing. And so what I would normally have to do is sit here and run command prompt and then type in some big FFmpeg dash I blah 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 command to transcode to ProRes and despite how many times I typed it in I never fully remembered it. I actually covered this in a previous video where I showed Handbrake as a decent option and then FFmpeg as the best way and then I would convert it to ProRes and I was like this is so tedious and sometimes I have a lot of clips that I need to convert. I wish I had a better option. And he wound up going through a few development, you know, a few weeks of development and made this cool little tool with Python that allows you to edit your right click context menu and add, I add items to it. And so there is a lot, as you can see in his little example here, far beyond what I know the commands for off the top of my head. And so hopefully we can get like, I would love to see a community kind of library or documentation of cool batch scripts or commands that you can run to improve your Explorer and context menu experience. Cause here he has thumbnail generators, cropping, RGB splitting, waveform generation, audio effects. You can work with documents, all sorts of stuff. Lots of really cool stuff. Now, what I have found to be most useful is I have my own video transcode folder. So I have transcode to VP9, which is Google's little fancy codec, uh, ProRes 60 FPS and 30 FPS transcodes for locking the frame rate for a variable frame rate, converting to GIF, and then converting to H.265. Now that is for all video files. If we're just looking at MKVs, then I also have a Remux MKV or FLV, it works on FLVs as well, to MP4. Now this is something you would see in OBS Studio where you go to File, Remux, I've shown that in all my tutorials. Now that's fine if you're just doing a one-off recording, but sometimes I record a lot of little clips, like for my Ryzen benchmarking video. I'm just recording clip after clip after clip. It's really obnoxious to have to go to File, Remux, File, Remux. I mean, you don't have to hit File each time, but you have to hit Browse, Select a File, do it. With this one, you can select up to 15 files, Right click, video transcode, Remux to FLV. It's gonna spawn all of the instances, which just looks badass. And since it's basically a file copy between the MKV or FLV and the MP4 containers, it goes super quick, unlike transcoding. However, there seems to be a little bit of a discrepancy here. I said you could select up to 15. If you select 16 or higher and right click, the option's gone. Now there are other options, and depending on your computer, this may still work. I don't know exactly what effects when these context menu appear, but as long as you're selecting 15 or fewer items, then you will be able to pop up your custom menu and choose that option. Now, in order to do this, you need to download his software. It is, of course, up on GitHub, and I'll have the link in the video description. He has an install guide if you're building from source, because it is open source, you can build that way. I am just using the EXE. If you go over here to releases, he has 32 exe here i have that in my windows mods folder along with all of my python and auto hotkey scripts i've been working on mastering and you run it it's going to ask for a uac prompt i believe yes it will that will be a black screen to you that is fine now here this is not entirely accurate he's going to release an update soon i believe the direct edit mode is no longer a work in progress it actually works so you can either edit to a file which will generate a .reg registry file that you then double click to apply to the registry editor and that's what I'm going to show here or primarily or you can do direct edit mode which is just going to edit what you already have and just edit in real time. Now you can do either or so 
I'll go ahead and do this real quick. If we go back to my video folder here, I right click video transcode. You see these four five options. I'm gonna rename convert to GIF. So convert to GIF, I'm gonna call it convert to GIFs. Hit save. Now if I right click it, convert to GIFs. So it works in real time, which many of you may prefer. If you do it the other way, which I'm gonna discard changes, actually I should have saved those. Relaunch it. If you do it in the file edit way, then when you, it doesn't entirely like Windows scaling right now, that's fine. Then if I make a change, I'm gonna hit file save. It's gonna open up a folder with the setup registry file, which I can then run, tell it okay, it's going to pop up here asking if I want to edit the registry. I'm going to say yes, and it will apply the changes. If you want to remove all of your entire work, you can run the remove.reg file. Um, but otherwise, setup.reg will remove the earlier entries. Like if you made a change, it won't just like duplicate it. It will remove the old ones and apply the new changes, which is handy. Or you can just use the direct edit mode. Once you are in the software, there is so much that you can do. So over here in the left-hand panel, you have your groups of commands that you can run along with the individual actions. So down here, you can remove selections. You can add a group, which is basically kind of like a folder. So for example, if I called this images and then image generation, maybe for like thumbnails, then you can have it in a group and then you can create actions within those groups. So I'm going to call this number two, and then you drag it to the appropriate group. Fairly straightforward common UI for this kind of thing. But then over on the right, you can set a custom icon for both of your groups and your actions. Kind of neat. Now, each action can then be assigned to different file types. And this is very detailed. So you have the general Windows assigned groups of file types. But then if you expand it, you have all of the individual file extensions as well. So if you only want to apply it to a certain extension, for example, my Remux one, is under the video set of extensions, but it only applies to .flv and .mkv files because those are the only ones that I would want to do that kind of remuxing with for the most part. So I have it set to those. You can also set a specific command to then run another command after it is done. So if you want to remux and then have it automatically transcode to ProRes through one of these commands, you can do that as well. Once you have made an action here, you can then go to commands and open editor and this is where you tell it what to actually do. So you can either assign it a bat file if you've already been using a batch file to run a specific script. You can basically just point it to that batch file and that right click menu option will run that batch file. Otherwise, you can directly type your command from that file in here without the need for the location of specific system executables as long as they're in your system path. For example, ffmpeg, I don't need to point it to C whatever ffmpeg, it just knows the command. Now, if you want to identify the file that is selected, that is with percent squiggle one. I have found that actually I found that from Dylan's examples to be what works. And then if you want to basically copy that name of the file, but then add a new extension to it, that seems to be print or percentage squiggle DNP one. I don't know why you can look into how Windows commands work. That's just what it is. As far as specific commands, like I said, I specifically have a bunch of video converting options selected as mine. So I have transcode to VP9, transcode to ProRes with two different frame rate locking options, convert to GIF, remux to FLV or from MKV or FLV to MP4, and then convert to H.265 using InVink. I'm going to go ahead and remove this new selection. But as you see here, you can do things with all sorts of different formats, and I really hope that you will put your suggestions and your ideas in the comments because I would love to add more functionality to my install. And ideally, I think he said something about maybe working on functionality to share it between computer, like multiple computers of yours to like keep them synced up, which would be really sick. For my specific commands, I will have them in the description below as, but these are them on screen now. So the, most of them are single commands. Actually, that's something worth noting as well. If you open the editor here, most of them are single line commands, ffmpeg, blah, 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 blah. And then a final output is that MP4. However, you can put multiple commands in. So for example, my GIF one is actually three different command lines. And you can do that because this is basically just interacting with the Windows command prompt terminal. And so there's an ffmpeg command, which I just ripped this from Dylan, 
to basically generate PNGs from your video file. Then it's going to take those PNGs, convert it to a GIF, and then delete all of the PNGs that it did. You can't do that with one command. Those are three different commands. And then you can sit here and add more. And then, if, for example, if you put them in the wrong order, you can actually change the order or remove them. And like I said, you can just point it to a direct batch file if that's what, you, what you're comfortable scripting in. Really flexible, really cool. And again, don't forget about the ability to run multiple commands simultaneously. Well, not simultaneously, but like back to back with that as well. My commands here, this is mine for H.264 invink conversion or H.265 invink conversion. It's got a set bit rate. I don't use this a whole lot just to experiment. Same thing with the VP9 transcode. I think that's a four megabit per second bit rate, kind of low. My, these two are the one, these two and the Remux are the ones I use the most, which is transcode to ProRes, which is the Apple, you know, uncompressed format and lock the frame rate to 60 or 30 if I'm using, working with variable frame rate files, such as from a weird computer webcam that I'm reviewing or NVIDIA Shadowplay. And then the Remux is literally just a copy from whatever container it's in now into an MP4 container, which is super handy. The big thing for me is the dash map O0 command. This is what was necessary to move multiple audio tracks from OBS recordings. By default, without that map zero flag, it was only moving the first audio track. So that moves all of them. I will have these linked in the video description below. And like I said, I would very much love to see what ideas you all come up with. This has been incredibly handy for my workflow. If nothing else in that example I showed where I have so many MKVs, I need to remux before I edit because Premiere's MKV support is still lacking. Instead of just doing them one at a time in OBS and wanting to tear my head, hair out, I can just sit there and convert them all. And I could even tell it to transcode after if I wanted and be good to go, ready to import them into editing. And you just get to watch a cool, a bunch of cool command prompt windows pop up if that's your sort of thing. So again, share your experiences, uh, give him feedback over on the GitHub link to it will be in the description below as well. I love supporting little homebrew um, open source tools like this, especially when they're kind of built for requests that I have made since I am, I, I seem to just be impossible to grasp an experience of programming, which makes sense since I don't have a long term experience with it. I just kind of have ideas and have to wait for other people to come up with solutions to them. And that's sometimes frustrating. So hopefully this is helpful for you. If it was, hit the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech content. Come hang out in our Discord where this guy started making it in, and I will see you in the next one.